hey, it's Jose from Newton, so let's talk about the first semester of business school, because the first semester of business school, as you've probably heard, is very uh, grueling, there's a lot of work. Uh, you know, when I was in business school, uh, one of my colleagues came and said to me, you know, I'm really worried about the first semester, it's incredibly hard, and you know, I've heard this old story that if you're at a poker table and you look around and you can't tell who the chump is, you're the chump, and that's the way I feel. That's what he said. Um, I probably should have felt that way in retrospect, but maybe, uh, you know, maybe I was too clueless to even know better. But the first semester is hard. It is a lot of work, and it's very dry technical work. You need that to ground the rest of your business school education, and they give it to you all up front. All right, so you're going to have five or six classes. Let's talk about what those are. Um, you will certainly have a quantitative tools class, uh, an accounting class, um, an operations class. You'll probably have a marketing class first semester. Most schools handle that first semester. Uh, you'll probably have um, an ethics class, and you'll almost certainly have some sort of a leadership organizational behavior class. Now, the different schools name them different things, but that's the subject matter of those classes. All right, so let's take them from the top. Quantitative tools is handled differently at different schools, but what it consists of is decision trees, linear programming, regression analysis, statistics, probability, some amount of all of those things. If you haven't done math for a long time, you're going to all of a sudden encounter four or five branches of mathematics you may never even have seen before because they're not the kind of math you learned in high school or even college, necessarily. So uh, you may want to spend a little bit of time on you know, whether it's Wikipedia or some other internet site to learn a little bit about this stuff before you get to school because otherwise it's just going to be completely alien and overwhelming to you. Now, different schools handle the quantitative tools class uh, differently. Some schools it's mandatory, um, and some schools it's invitation only. Invitation in the way you get invited to the courthouse to discuss your speeding tickets, but invitation uh, in the sense that not everybody has to go. And the reason for that is those schools like to um, just invite the people who probably need it the most, and the people who've been doing finance or whatever for a few years don't have to go. And if that's the way your school handles it, it will probably be a summer class before school even starts. Um, now, if, uh, uh, if you're really freaking out about math, again, I advise you to spend a little bit of time looking at that stuff beforehand, you know, at least familiarize with your, you know, yourself with it so that when you get to school, it's not quite as shocking to you. Um, the concepts aren't extremely hard, but they, they are different from the kind of stuff you've probably learned in math class or even a work environment before, uh, unless you're a professional gambler, um, which I don't recommend, by the way. Now, uh, the, on to the second class equally dry, and that's accounting. Accounting is not math per se, it is the lingua franca of your business school education, and you're going to have to use it in just about every class you have from then on out, which is why it's always first semester. And accounting is pretty dry, a lot of people think it's pretty boring, but it is very necessary, and it's a little bit quantitative. And then you'll also have another quantitative class in operations. Now operations is basically the science of how factories work, it's the science of assembly lines. And you'll cover things like uh, optimization, uh, bottlenecks, throughput, uh, division of labor. There'll probably be a kind of a case or, or a, um, an exercise where the whole school gets together and, and kind of proves to themselves that division of labor uh, is the way to go. But like you'll assemble printed circuit boards or something. That's what we did uh, when I was in school. We had like our whole section get together and assemble printed circuit boards. And the whole idea was uh, you're supposed to quickly realize you know, if each person on a team of six or seven does exactly one task, you can just do them way faster. You can assemble way more circuit boards than you can if each person is doing all seven tasks. Um, so kind of funny story about that, because uh, I happen to have a buddy um, who he and I were just really nimble with our fingers. And it turned out in our one little group that we were better if everybody just sat around and watched us do it. And we won. So we kind of screwed up the exercise. But you'll probably have an exercise like that um, in operations class. Unfortunately, the rest of operations is a lot more boring. It's uh, it's a lot of kind of throughput, process-driven stuff. You may have to read one or two books uh, outside of class um, that it'll, it'll be forced reading uh, about various things that happened with operations uh, in, in companies. And you know, it's not most people's favorite class. Some people get hopelessly lost in it and never really catch up. Um, I guess the good news is it's really just the same five concepts repeated over and over um, in different cases. So, um, but at any rate, that's what it is. So you've got three classes now, um, quant tools, accounting, and operations, which are very quantitative and dry and technical. Now you can probably begin to see why that first semester has that reputation for being so grueling. People who haven't had any of this stuff, and most people haven't had much of it, uh, even people who came from finance, uh, you know, can be like, hey, what the heck is this all about? Um, there's, you know, this is 
boring and incredibly difficult at the same time. Not most people's favorite combination of things. Um, unfortunately, you think it's going to get better with marketing, but it doesn't entirely get better with marketing. Marketing is a pretty quantitative technical subject. It was true of marketing even before the internet in terms of, I mean, sure, marketing's got branding, it's got strategy, it's got advertising, it's got like creative stuff, but it's also got a lot of math. Accessing numbers, metrics, analyzing daily reports, analyzing the return on investment of various projects, you know, various ad spends, various event marketing you do, you know, you've got to analyze the performance of those. And does it make sense to continue doing that in the future? There's a lot of numbers in marketing class. As I said, that was true even before the internet. The internet has ushered in a wave of even more quantitative marketing, kind of daily, you know, numbers and metrics that people who run internet companies, um, like Newton, look at all the time because they want to know how many visitors came to our site, how many visitors signed up to do something you know, on our site, how many visitors bought the product, whatever that is. Very, very quantitative now. And so your marketing class, which you would have hoped would have been sort of a respite from this very quantitative technical stuff you've been studying, it is a little bit, but not as much as you're going to think. Now, um, the last class that you'll definitely have uh, is leadership or organizational behavior. And that's basically soap operas meet business school. Right, so it's it's a lot of fun. It's very easy. Everyone kind of chills out in leadership and sort of contributes whatever's off the top of their head about how a particular case or a situation at some company should have been handled. Right, it's very like your opinion is right no matter what your opinion is basically. Um, so it's it's a little bit of a of a break from the rest of the schedule. And then you'll also probably have ethics. Now ethics again, like quantitative tools, is handled differently from school to school. At some schools, it's a shorter course. At some schools, it's an ungraded course. Um, but most schools have ethics now, and of course, with the wave of, of uh, problems on Wall Street and throughout the corporate world right now, those ethics classes are becoming more uh, accentuated, not less so. So that's a little bit about what you're going to have in terms of classes first semester. The good news is second semester, the content gets more interesting, and then second year, you'll have electives if you're going to a two-year school, and you can study whatever you want. Um, in addition to what you're actually going to have in terms of classes, you should also know a little bit about the case method, because business school is not like any other school you've probably been to, in that everything is uh, run according to the case method. So you probably want to do a little bit of research into what that looks like. I'll tell you just a couple things about it now. Basically, you read a case every day. It's 20 to 30 pages of text, and then a bunch of exhibits, and graphs, and charts, and income statements. And you go to class, and you talk about that case. And the case is like something that happened to some company uh, in business in the past. And the, you will be cold called. The professor will you know, um, say, Hey, would you like to talk about the uh, the Xerox case? You know what happened. Tell us what you think they should have done differently, etc. And uh, different students will contribute different things to class, which is why business school is made up of students who come from different fields. Because you want to have some who are from accounting, some who are from finance, some who are from consulting, some who are from technology, so that everybody can contribute their shared wisdom to the class. So that's the way it's supposed to run. In an ideal case method scenario, the professor does a little of the talking. The professor guides the, discuss the discussion, and the students do the talking. So that's what you have to look forward to first semester. It, I'm not going to lie to you. It's going to be grueling for a lot of you. But uh, it's, you know, it's grueling for most people. But um, it's a lot of fun, and it's uh, necessary to prepare you for what comes, to, comes after, which is a lot more fun. So put your head down, get through it, learn as much as you can, because that's going to provide the foundation for your business school education. All right. Talk to you later.